Now the downside to that, and the downside to a lot of this HID stuff, is the onboard computer. If you have an onboard computer with check control function, if you run a wiring harness, if you run these types of ballasts, if you run a plug and play kit, there's a high probability you're going to get a, uh, an OBC failure code. It's going to tell you a low beam failure. Um, there are ways around that. Um, there's these little uh, little things called HID warning cancelers. You can disable the check control. You can clip the wires. Don't clip the wires. Um, that's a getaway of doing it. There's a great DIY. Um, Brett Bremen uh, 141, I believe, is uh, his screen name is. He had figured out at some point in time how to disable uh, through the functions of the OBC itself, how to disable the check control function. So go over on uh, m3forum.net, do a search for uh, DIYs under his screen name, and you will find that. You can disable it without having to snip wires and, and cut electrical lines in your, uh, in your car. So that's a deal with ballasts. They do draw more current on startup than the halogens, but once they even out, it's actually less. So the startup sequence is what you need to worry about. Whether or not it's going to actually damage any wiring in your car, eh. No one can really say that for sure. We hope not. This over here, just so you know, this is a plug-and-play uh, rebased bulb. See how this has an H1 base on it with the, uh, the actual HID capsule glued in here? This over here is the rubber, rubber grommet that goes into the, uh, into the hole that we made to weatherproof things, and that is that. This is a uh, plug-and-play kit in its entirety. you got the ballasts. 9006 uh, female connectors over here. See the other one? H1 bulbs that plug into the uh, into the back of the H1 projectors and the Euro, uh, Euro style headlights. So that is a uh, deal with color temperature and electronics for HIDs. So now I've been trash talking plug and play kits for quite a while. Um, are they really that bad? No, they're not really that bad. They can be. A, uh, an upgrade from the stock lighting if you know what you're doing you pick the correct color temperature and uh, you uh, aim the lights correctly so you don't have stray light flying into people's eyes and you have a color temperature that's conducive to actually throwing some light on the road they could could be a viable option okay there uh, there's still room to go up though there's still room for improvement upon plug-and-play kits definitely room for improvement is there a way that we can get the projector and ballast set up from an OEM, from a stock HID lighting system working in our BMW. Well, yeah, there's absolutely a way, and we call it retrofitting. Um, there's a way that we can retrofit and or fabricate um, a mounting system for a true HID projector into our uh, BMW E36 headlights. Forget about the electrical stuff for now. We'll, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But. And this is it over here. This is going to look pretty ghetto for now because I don't have any um, of the aesthetic pieces around it that would cover up the uh, the bracket and the stuff that I made. But this is without the lens because I didn't didn't want it to get scratched while I was working on it. This is the TSX projector sitting in an E36 headlight. Okay. So now what I've done here is I've taken out taken out the projector that uh, was in this depot headlight. That's where this one came from. I've hollowed out all the uh, the mounting mechanisms around it and made room for this uh, TSX projector over here. I've mounted it in. You can see this this part over here. I haven't haven't quite bolted in yet because I have not aimed it. But um, now we got the HID projector in the headlight. And what's going to happen when I put this outer lens over it, if I do things right and I play my cards right and make it look nice, is it's going to be pretty hard to tell unless you're right up on top of the light that there's an HID projector in here. But it's going to perform exactly the same as an accurate TSX headlight would. Why? Because we've got the whole projector in here. This is a fabulous way to get uh, HID lighting in your E36 and it works great. Now, be warned, <laughs> it's no small task. This requires a lot of fabrication. It's, in all honesty, a complete pain in the ass to do. But, like anything that's, uh, that's hard to do, the uh, the efforts are well worth it and you're well rewarded once you actually get into uh, aiming it and seeing the light output. It's uh, definitely a huge upgrade from stock and definitely a huge upgrade from even the, uh, the glass lens uh, running plug and play kits over here. So There's a lot of information out on the web about retrofits. Check out HIDplanet.com. Bimmer Forms has a, uh, 
a number of DIYs on people that have put TSX projectors into their E36 headlights. Um, now there are other HID projectors out there that you can get from other cars. Uh, Infinity FX35 is another one. That's what we call by xenon. I mean, I'm not going to get totally into uh, different types of xenon lighting. Just understand that there are options out there if you want to retrofit real HID components into your headlights. It can be done. People have done it with stellar results, and um, it's actually becoming pretty commonplace. Um, also note that any of this HID stuff over here is completely illegal. You're not supposed to be running around with retrofitted projectors. You're not supposed to be running around with a uh, plug and play kits in your lights. There are places where you can get pulled over and get a ticket for it. So um, it's a chance that all of us are willing to take. It's a chance that you have to be willing to take it if you want to uh, run lighting that hasn't been DLT approved in your stock headlights. Okay, so that's the deal with that. Retrofitting. World's better than um, than the output that you have for uh, running plug and play kits in these lights and definitely world's better than <laughs> the output with this disgusting stock headlight over here. But uh, it takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, and a lot of uh, reading in order to know how to do this. So that's that. In terms of running um, the electronics with these, there are ballasts that are available that will plug directly in. Um, digital ones or regular analog ballasts that will plug directly into your uh, your stock lighting. Again, you run the risk of wiring damage. You run the risk of OBC uh, failure codes and stuff like that. So there are workarounds. It's a little bit beyond the scope of this video to go into all of them, but just understand that. Um, in my retrofit, I got depots running uh, TSX projectors in my car right now, and I'm running a set of digital ballasts that are 55 watt. They are guaranteed not to throw any codes. They are guaranteed not to draw over 6 amps, which is below the stock fuse rating, so they're completely safe for the wiring. They put out more light than uh, the regular stock OEM 35 watt uh, ballasts do at the expense of bulb life because they actually eat the bulbs up about 20% faster but at any rate just to let you know there are options out there for ballasts uh, digital ones that do not harm your stock wiring do not draw too much current they uh, won't throw OBC codes and they work with the uh, actual true HID bulbs the D2S capsules D2R capsules or whatever so um, that is that as I said there's a lot to know but I think we uh, covered a lot of bases we talked about the stock headlights we talked about uh, glass lens upgrades, we talked about the optics and the difference between a normal HID projector and running rebase bulbs. In the halogen projector we talked about uh, the differences between the stock US headlights and the um, glass lens ones over here. We talked about color temperature, we talked about plug and play kits. We uh, I think covered a lot of ground. So, As usual with any of my videos, if um, you have any questions, any comments that you want to make, anything else that you want to see, feel free to just Shoot me a message, let me know, leave a comment on YouTube. If you are on the uh, BMW forums, definitely feel free to shoot me a private message or an email from over there as well. So, hope that helps uh, some people out. You know, as usual, thanks for watching, and I'll see you around. Thanks.